Hello everyone, and we're going to get to the final part of uh, Excel's iterative approach solution methods for us. Uh, and this is really, we're kind of ending on the high note here because this is the most powerful aspect of what Excel does for us. And that's going to be Solver. But before we can talk about Solver, I'm going to talk about its, its weaker cousin, uh, GoalSeek. But these are optimization approaches. What do we mean by optimization? Uh, please look at the uh, accompanying slides so you can see that, but uh, effectively optimization is nothing more than we're trying to find a maximum or a minimum uh, to an answer. It's going to find the optimal value for that, and it's just minimizing a function or maximizing a function, and, and that is the way uh, we can oftentimes find an explicit solution to a problem. And we'll use this for a lot of different reasons, a lot of different settings, a lot of different areas. But I'll give you an example of how this works. Um, let's start with goal seek. Uh, goal seek, if you have a function, I'm going to create a random one of x5 minus 10 uh, x third uh, plus uh, 2, 9, 2, 9 is equal to 0. Let's say that our that's our function. We find one of, want to find one of the roots. Well, we can do this by creating a column that's x and column that's f of x. So we don't have to be columns, they're going to be actual just single values. We have to start with a guess, like because it is a iterative approach, so it requires an initial guess. You'll always have an initial guess with goal seek or solver. You'll enter in the equation, and this time it is this to the fifth minus ten times x to the third, and I just realized I entered it in completely wrong, but um, um, let's let's do it like we see it here. Let's say x to the x, let's say that's to the third. I don't know what's going to happen here, but yeah, it's worth, worth a shot. Uh, 29, 29 is equal to zero. You get some really horrible number. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's find out. So, in order to do iterative solutions, you go to data and then you go down to what if analysis and you'll see an option called goal seek this is like I said the least powerful version of your uh, optimization tools but it's one we that's built in um, so what we're gonna say we can set a single cell to a value that we want in this case we want it to equal zero it doesn't have to be but for our purposes it's gonna be and we're gonna do this by changing the cell X and it's going to go through a crazy list of numbers until it finds an answer. And that was actually pretty cool because it did find one. <laughs> nice. So you have here a current value is negative uh, 2, 7, e to the negative fifth. That's not exactly zero, obviously, but it's approaching it. And I think we just ran into the problem of where goal seek will stop after a certain number of iterations. If we retried it, let's see, and let it go back again, set it value to zero by changing the same cell. Click OK. Oh, that must be the precision that's built into it. And so you get the answer that it, that it, that is. Is that the only root? Well, it probably shouldn't be, but uh, that is one of the uh, solutions to that uh, equation that you have that will uh, uh, result. Again, you're limited to the same problem as other uh, iterative techniques in that <coughs> you have to have a guess that's reasonable enough that it'll converge to the value that you want. So in this case, we're going to set the cell here. I'm trying a different initial value to a value of 0. And we're going to try here. Click OK. And now it converged to a new number. Um, so because we chose a different value, as it should because there's different roots to this expression. But this is how the iterative techniques work. Um, and the more powerful version, and the one that will probably often be used almost exclusively, unless you really prefer to use goal seek, will be what we call solver. But you have to make sure solver is enabled. So go to files and options, go to add-ins, go and make sure you have your solver add-in enabled. And I already had mine enabled, but this is how you can get to it. And so for Solver, you just click that, and now you'll see you have a lot more options and a lot more to do here. I will use this 
in the future to give you lots of examples of how you can solve. It'll be in class examples as well. And I'll give a video um, probably tomorrow or, or on uh, um, by uh, Monday on how to use Solver to find nonlinear regression solutions as well as uh, other approaches uh, like such as linear programming. But here you can see that you have some objective function as we call it, some objective. Um, and this is the actual function that you're optimizing. In this case, it'll be the f of x, because that is what we're solving for. And then you can pick different values. You can set it to a minimum value, a maximum, a minimum, or a specific unique value. It really depends on what it is you're trying to do. Um, oftentimes, uh, in this case, we're trying to find the exact solution of zero, so we'll say zero. But if, for example, we're doing nonlinear regression and we're trying to minimize the sum of squared, you select the minimum instead. Then you specify the value that you're going to be uh, uh, iterating on and guessing. And here you'll notice it doesn't say cell, it says cells. We can actually have solver guess multiple different inputs and converge to a single solution. Now realize that means that there's going to be if you're if you have a complex equation where you have multiple variables, it is possible you have a parametrically larger number of of values that can converge and give you different answers. So you, there's a certain amount of trust that you have to put in and making sure that you understand um, what it is that you're looking for. But this is a uh, very powerful um, uh, tool to be able to use multiple inputs and minimize the value or trying to you know, vary a lot of different values to get the answer that you want. Here you can also set constraints if you need to. For example, maybe you don't want the value to be, maybe you don't want x to be less than negative uh, 4. Maybe you don't want it to be out in that area. So you can specify it to not pick the value that's going to be less than negative 4. Um, make the constraint variable is not negative. Um, we don't need to leave that limitation. And you can select your method. You don't need to. Uh, there are different options here that's built into it. I welcome you to explore those and see if you understand them. Um, I'm not going to be testing you on understanding all of these. Just realize that there are different approaches to um, uh, to the iterative methods that you have power that you have the uh, access to do. So we could say okay, and it's going to keep the solution. It found a better solution than it did before goal seek um, because our initial value was um, or solve uh, because our initial value was less than negative four. It picked that one. If we wanted it, oh cancel. If we wanted to be change this. And let's say we want it to be actually greater than negative 4. I have a positive value. And we can solve. It'll go to the next solution that's greater than that value. Click OK. Or we can even take this, delete this constraint, and solve. It's already at that value, so it's going to guess that. We can enter in a different number. Or 50, 10, solve, solver, and it'll converge to another value. Actually, in this case here, um, it didn't converge at all. It gave an answer that was uh, illogical um, in this case. So it's one of the things you have to be careful of in your initial guesses is making sure that they do work in a way that's, that's appropriate for um, your solver solution. So solve and you get an answer. So each one has a power of limitation, each one has an advantage, but it's important to uh, be aware of, of what these are and what these can do for you. So that'll end this really quick tutorial and exposure to solver. Like I said, I will uh, provide additional videos uh, as we move forward and give you an example of a nonlinear regression, which is one of the more useful features of this, as well as another example of solving a multiple set of nonlinear expressions that are easy to solve iteratively, difficult to solve directly or analytically. And this example where solver 
really shines for us. So thanks a lot, and I will see you on Tuesday.